Okay. I think we should get started. Let's do it. Okay, welcome everyone. My name's Simon and I'm going to be doing some webinars over the next couple of weeks where I'll be showing you some top tips for Light Rider. Now this is the first time we've ever done it and there's loads of technology going on as you can see here. Um, we've got iPads and Androids and phones and streaming and synchronizing. So bear with us if stuff goes wrong. This is my little second room at home which I've just filled with gear. Um, I don't have a super powerful internet connection, so let's just hope everything stays stable. Um, the version of Light Rider I'm using today, uh, one of our developers, Adam, sent me about 35 minutes ago. So why not live on the edge a little bit? So what I'm going to do today is just tell you some basic stuff. It's only going to last about half an hour. I'm going to show you my rig that I've got here, kind of uh, what lights I've got, how I've connected it up and how I've set it up in Light Rider. Um, and then next week, I'm gonna do three more webinars on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'm gonna talk about some of the more advanced stuff like creating your own fixture profiles with our new Light Cloud and Profile Builder. And I'll be talking about synchronizing with your DJ software with Ableton Link, um, along with using these uh, multibars, uh, one of which I've got up here because I know loads of people use multibars and it's kind of one of our most requested uh, topics at the moment. So I'm going to dedicate a whole um, live stream just to multibars. So let's get started. Um, so I'll put a few extra lights on so we can see what's going on here. Let's stop all this rotating. Okay. Let me turn these bars down a little bit because they're really bright. Wow. Okay, so as you can see, I've got quite a few lights in this little back bedroom. Um, we're going to start with these scanners. So I've got some uh, SCX50s by Stairville over here, here and up here. Um, I've also got some Stairville X bricks, which are these uh, LED bars I've got over here. I love the Stairville stuff. Uh, we're not endorsed by them, but um, you get a lot of bang for your buck with Stairville. Uh, these are super bright. In fact, they're too bright sometimes, to be honest. Um, so you've got to keep the brightness down on those. Um, these are fantastic. They're only about six kilograms in weight, and you've got a uh, like, rotating gobo, rotating prism. And what I like about these, you've got a motorized focus, so you can control the focus with DMX, which is quite cool. A lot of these uh, smaller scanners, they have a manual focus ring, um, so you can get your gobos nice and sharp with those. Um, it's not just Stairville stuff though, uh, we've got a couple of American DJ Inno Color Beam Z7s. What I like about these, they've got a cool zoom feature, so you can have a really narrow beam, or you can have a wider beam with them. Um, and then up here, I've got a Yora Light KLS Laser Bar Pro FX. Um, so I've not got this connected today, but I'm going to do a whole session on this laser bar next week. Um, a lot of these bars are similar. Uh, you know, you've got the Chauvet gig bars, of course, and a bunch of others as well. So the same principles kind of apply to all the various bars. But anyway, uh, we're going to leave that to one side today. Um, and then we've got this awesome Light Rider sign as well, but that's not on DMX, so that's going to be staying on. Um, what you can't see, which is down here, is a fog machine. Um, I've got a hazer machine. I quite like hazers, which let out the uh, haze slowly, as opposed to the fog machine, which spurts it out really fast. Uh, as much as I love that effect, um, you know inevitably when you're doing a disco, you often have complaints about smoke. Everyone starts coughing straight away. So um, I always like to put a little bit of haze in the room, just so you can see those beams. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit in now. Okay. All right, so let's get to it. Just check the live stream here. No problems. Seems to be all right. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is start by creating a brand new project. 
So to do that, I'm going to go up here. I'm connected, by the way, to an LR512, which is our Wi-Fi device. I'm connected directly from my iPad here to the device. Um, for those of you on Android, the same principles apply. Um, I do have a, a little Nexus, actually, um, in the other room, which I'm going to use as a backup. But um, this is just a standard Apple iPad. Um, in terms of which iPads are used, Anything uh, within the past like three years should be fine. Um, but if you want to drop uh, my colleague Piers a shout, he'll give you uh, a list of all the compatible devices. Uh, Piers is going to be replying to our Facebook live stream, by the way, today. So uh, if anyone has any questions, drop it over there. He'll try and get back to you as quickly as he can. And uh, all the best questions he's going to save to the end. And I'll try and answer some questions at the end. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new project, which is over here. I'm going to call it live stream. And we have a couple of options, keep fixtures and keep presets. So that basically keeps all the lights and the presets from your current project. But I want to create a completely empty project. So I'm going to hit create like this. And as you see, all my lights go off and the project's completely empty. So let's go over to the fixtures screen, which is completely empty at the moment. So in terms of like the physical connections, you basically run an XLR socket out of our little light rider box and then into the first light, out of the first light and into the second light. It's as simple as that really. Um, I've got a little splitter um, which basically allows you to run an XLR cable into the splitter and then you can run several XLR cables out of the splitter. So if you have a look at the rig, the lights on the top are running on one chain, uh, the lights on the left are on another, and the lights on the right are on another. Um, I found it just kind of helps with reliability. Often if you have like a problem with an XLR cable, you can identify the problem a lot quicker if you've got several chains. So I'd always suggest, uh, you know, if you've got more than like eight fixtures that you're connecting and um, try one of the splitters they're pretty inexpensive you can normally pick one up for about 70 or 80 euros so let's add some lights so I'm going to select the brand Stairville and it's the SC X50 and I'm going to select mode 2 and add four of them one two, three, and four. And as you see, the lights start moving and doing all sorts of stuff as soon as you add them. I'm going to go back over to the live screen now, and I'm just going to put these in the center. So I can do that here. And I'm going to stop them changing color as well, which I can do here. Just kind of makes everything a little easier. OK, back to the fixture screen. Now I'm going to add a couple of moving heads. American DJ. And these are the Z7s. Hopefully I've remembered where these are patched. So I'm going to add one. And I'm going to add another one. There we go. So right now, over here, what you see is the DMX address. Um, I'm guessing most people watching this stream are familiar with setting all this up, but I'll go through it anyway, just in case there's any uh, new users out there. So this number, you actually need to set up on your light. So for example, if I go to this fixture over here, if I just press enter, you might see it's pretty far away from the camera, but there's a little display that lights up. And you've got a number, and the number on there has to match the number right here. It's as simple as that. Okay, so let's put this back in. So we've got our four scanners, and we've got our two moving heads. I'm going to add some LED bars now. So, Stairville again. And these are the X bricks and I'm running these in mode 2. So you see sometimes a fixture can have several modes. Um, the mode depends on how many channels it uses up. So sometimes to save channels, um, fixtures will have a smaller mode. It's often for the more traditional DMX desks as well. You know the ones where you have some sliders in the middle? Um, 
if you've only got six sliders, obviously 13 channels is a bit difficult. So many of these manufacturers, they'll make a version with just a few channels that you can control with a traditional desk, and then the full version with tons of channels, which I always prefer to use in Light Rider, because generally the more channels you get, the more you can do with the light. So I'm going to press 13 channels here, and I'm going to add one, two, three, and four. Okay. The final light I'm going to add is a, it's not actually a light, it's a smoke machine. Or my haze, I should I say. So I'm going to add there at address 125. Okay, so let's go over to the live screen and see what we can do with these. So if I hit rainbow, they should all start changing colours. Good, that's a good sign. And then we've got the moves over here. If I hit the swimmer, they should all start moving about. Fantastic. Always good to try a quick wow effect, which is this one in the middle. Okay, yep, yeah, that seems to be working. Okay, and let's put a little bit of haze in here as well so we can see these beams. All right. Okay, I'm going to just go over to the subs here. In the subs, you can control each different fixture type independently. So you see I can take my scanners down, I can take my inno colour beams down, and I can take my Xbox down as well. What I'm going to do for now, I'm going to bring my scanners up, and I'm going to bring these up full as well, and I'll just bring these up to here, because I think they're bright enough like that. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you was about ordering your lights because as you see from the setup, if you work from, if you work around the rig, so from the bottom left we've got a scanner, then we've got a couple of LED bars, then another scanner, then a couple of moving heads, then another scanner, then a couple of LED bars, and then finally another scanner. Now of course Light Rider doesn't know we've got our lights in this order. So it always helps to actually tell Light Rider which order your lights are in. So for example, if I trigger this chaser effect over here, the uh, Night Rider effect, I'll just remove some of these... Uh, let's just have it in pink one second. By the way, these segments around the edge, uh, I get a lot of questions about this. Basically, these segments control any lights that have a fixed colour wheel. So, for example, these four scanners I've got, they don't actually have colour mixing. They can't mix red, green and blue to create colours. They have a colour wheel of fixed colours. So, this allows you to kind of override the colour wheel. So, you see here we can pick an orange or red colour. Over here we can pick a white colour. And if all these segments are switched off, basically Light Rider will automatically try and find the closest colour that you've got in the wheel. Now, sometimes this can be good, you know, if you're doing rainbow or disco effects, but with this kind of chaser effect, as you see, it looks a bit of a mess because the lights are always trying to find the closest colour on the wheel. So for chaser effects, I always prefer to turn these fixtures off or just have them in a static colour, like white, for example. So I'm going to keep these white for now. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to turn these off because I just want to show you something with these moving heads and bars. So I'm going to slow this effect down a little bit, which I can do here, and I'm going to make it smaller as well, which I can do here. Okay, so if you see this little pixel that's running at the moment, you might notice that it plays on the LED bars first, but then it plays on the moving heads afterwards. So it's not actually in the same order that we see the lights. Can you see at the moment it's doing the Z7s and then it's going back to the bars again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder these lights so the pattern plays correctly. So to do this we go back to the fixture screen and you see we've got an SCX50, that's one of the scanners. So we've got that, that's the bottom left light. After that we've actually got an LED bar. So I'm going to touch and hold and drag that over there. Then I'm going to take another LED bar. I'm going to put it here. 
Then I'll take the two moving heads that are in the middle, which I'll put after the scanner. And then finally, I'll take these last two LED bars, so these are the ones on the right, and I'll put these in between the two scanners. Okay, so now when we look at the effect, if you notice, it plays on the bars on the left, and then it plays on the lights in the middle, and then it plays on the bars on the right. And a lot of your effects can look a lot more powerful and impressive when you've got your lights in the correct order. Let me give you an example. So if I play this symmetrical effect now, you see how the, it kind of goes up the bars and then finishes on the Z7s. And I can do it reversed as well. And this doesn't just work for colour effects. It also works for move effects. So I'm going to show you in a second, but over here where we have our move effects, we've got this great function called fan. And this actually fans the beams out. But if Light Rider doesn't know the order that your lights are in, it's not going to look right. So it's always worth just taking five minutes to rearrange those lights into the, into the correct order. And um, it gives you a much more impressive show at the end. So that's the first top tip. What I want to go through now is actually positioning your lights. So I'm going to put some smoke into the room. By the way, another little tip, if you drag your finger off these, they turn orange and they actually latch on and they'll stay on until you tap again. The same goes for like blackout and blinder. So if I touch here and slide, the lights are now off until I touch again and the lights come back on. The same for blinder as well. Okay, that's quite bright enough. Okay, so I'm going to stop these and I'm going to turn off the LED bars. That looks cool now. Now we've got some haze in here. I'm going to turn the scanners back on. Okay. So, if you have a look here, I've got a tilt effect. I'm going to tap this. And you see the lights start moving up and down. Now, have you noticed that the scanners are moving up and down together? Let me just turn shift off so I can demonstrate this properly. There we go. So, the scanners are kind of moving up and down, but the moving heads, they're moving left to right. And that's because we need to set the limitations. We basically need to tell Light Rider which direction these lights are pointing in, and we need to set a movable area. And again, this is something that only takes a couple of minutes during setup, and it can really transform your light show. So, for example, I'm going to put my lights in the center again here. I'm just going to set the fan to 50%, so they're all pointing forwards. Okay. So now I'm going to go over back to the fixtures screen and we can select our fixtures here so I can select one fixture at a time and then I can move these sliders here so you see right now I'm controlling this scanner in the bottom corner if I press this button here it will select all lights of the same type so you see I have all four scanners here so now if I move the tilt all the scanners move up and down together. Now, you may have noticed this slider. Right now it's at the bottom and the lights are pointing at the ceiling. If I move this up, the slider's at the top, but the lights are pointing on the floor. So it's actually the wrong way round. So I'm going to reset that. To change this, we need to click this button in the top right over here. And this is the limitations button. So I'm going to tap this. And to invert the tilt channel we basically take the maximum point and the minimum point and we swap them over so have a look at this if I go like this you see these squares have now turned red so these fixtures they're now inverted so if I go back to the channels and I move the tilt One second, this actually overrides the limited value, so this one will look the same. However, if I go and play the tilt effect, the lights now correctly move up and down. So we've corrected the first problem. The tilt's now working in the correct direction. 
And this can often be a lot easier, you know, than going up to the light, going into your menu, finding the invert tilt option. Just swapping that grid around is a nice quick way to solve the problem, especially if the light's up in a rig somewhere and you can't get to it. So now we're going to try and solve this second problem, which is that the moving heads are moving left to right instead of up and down. So I'll put the lights back in the center. Let's go back to the fixtures screen. And I'm going to select my two Inno Color Beam Z7s over here. I'm going to go over here. Okay, so what I can do again, if I touch my finger on the bottom, the lights are going to move to the floor. And I can slowly move this until the moving heads are also pointing on the floor, just like this. And I can do the same with left and right. So if I touch the left square, all the lights move to the left. It's actually the right for the camera, but the left if you're at the DJ position. There we go. And then if I touch the square over here, all the lights move to the opposite direction. So I'll move the heads so they're pointing in the same direction as the scanners. Let go. And now you see all the lights are pointing in the same direction. So if we go back to the live screen, let's trigger this tilt effect again. There we go, that's better. Now you see all the lights are moving together. Now of course you don't always want them to move together, but I can add some delay like this. If I want to add a fan, the lights are now going to fan inwards and outwards together. So I can fan my lights outwards and I can fan my lights inwards as well just like this there we go yeah that's look now now this is looking cool then i can play my symmetrical effect again like this let's bring in those led bars again there we go so you see just by arranging the fixtures properly in the list and setting the limitations We've now transformed the show and we've got something much more coherent where all the lights kind of work together a little bit more. So they're the kind of two big things I wanted to show you today. I'll just show you one more thing. And that's the actual override feature. So let's say we've got an effect playing like this. I'm going to put these scanners in, let's say, in blue. Okay, so some of you may have noticed the mirror ball up at the top. It's not something I've spoken about yet, but you know, we all love mirror balls. So, of course, on its own, it doesn't do a lot. So let's put a couple of these lights on the mirror ball. So to do this, we go over to the fixtures screen. And I'm going to select this first scanner. This is the one in the bottom left corner. I'm going to set the color to white. And I'm going to override the pan and the tilt, just like this. I'll move it, let's see, up a little bit. To the right a little bit, there we go. Nice, okay. Now I want a few more spots. Let's do it on the other one as well, on the bottom right. I'll make it white, like this. I'll take the pan and tilt like this. And I'll move this up. There we go. How cool does that look? You might not be able to see it so well on the stream, actually. I'm going to shut some of the other lights out so we can see it. Now, I haven't actually switched this mirror ball on because the motor is really loud and you will not be able to hear what I'm saying whilst the mirror ball's on. But... There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's cool these back up and you can save this into a preset so your presets are along the bottom so if I take preset 21 for example if I touch and hold this preset I can call this mirror save okay so uh, I thought I'd managed to get through that just about let's take some questions with Piers um, Piers do you have any questions Any questions, Piers? Uh, do you know what? This uh, Facebook stream, I think, is about a minute out of time. So I'm going to ask him on, on Skype here. Let's see what we've got. 
tell you what, whilst I'm waiting for pairs, I'm going to have a quick check of the feed myself. Why no red on fixed light colour wheel, only pink and orange? That's a great question, Jason. Um, so this is a question we get asked quite a lot. So basically what Jason's asking is, you see we've got uh, this colour wheel here, and he's asking why there's not a red colour on the outside. Um, and the reason for that is, Light Rider actually looks for the closest colours, which is actually on the light. Now, there is actually a red here. It's just that this is uh, an iPhone 6 I'm using to uh, record the tablet. And uh, yeah, basically, it's just the colour rendering. It looks orange when it should be red. But um, I understand the question because sometimes um, you've got a particular colour that you want to access, but you can't find it on the wheel here. And what it normally means is that colour doesn't exist on the lighting fixture. Um, if, you sh if you're sure it does exist and you've seen it in the user manual or you can control it manually, but it's not appearing in Light Rider, it could be something to do with the fixture profile. And I'm going to go through how we can fix that in a tutorial next week. So I hope that answers your question, Jason. Um, it's basically that the colour doesn't exist on the fixture or that the fixture profile needs modifying. Let's see what we've got next. Okay, a couple of people have asked about white, amber, and UV support. So, that was just a network error, by the way, because I'm not actually on the internet, and it's trying to uh, download fixture profiles. So, white, amber, and UV. Yep, yeah, it's a question we get asked a lot, and um, for the moment, the only way to control your amber and UV is to actually do it on the fixture screen by manually moving these sliders over here. Um, the white does work. Basically, the white is controlled by moving the colour towards the centre of the wheel like this. It will be calculated automatically. Um, we would like to introduce amber and UV support. Uh, the reason we don't have it is because when we first designed Light Rider, which was a few years back, um, these fixtures, they just didn't really exist. It's in the same way that these multibars didn't exist. And uh, obviously they're getting more and more popular now, so um, let's just put it this way. It's on our to-do list for the future, and we definitely want to integrate something special with UV and with Amber. Um, okay, let's see what's next. One asked about pan and tilt limitations and how to set correctly. Okay, I guess you asked about that before I explained it, so uh, I'll leave that one unless you've got any further questions on it. Um, what else have we got here? Current issues with the app. Yes, so basically we have just launched a brand new profile editor. Um, we launched it all a couple of days ago. Um, it seems that there are a few issues with some profiles that the app doesn't like. Um, if you have any problems, the quickest, fi the quickest fix is to just disable your internet. So disable your Wi-Fi network when you open the app. Um, we have actually fixed these issues. Um, we're pretty sure we've fixed them today. Um, so we're going to put a new version up to the App Store this evening. Um, normally it takes Apple about two days to uh, kind of check it and fix it. So yeah, you should have a completely fixed version in two days time. Um, whilst you're waiting for that, just switch your internet off when you log in and then switch your internet back on and it should solve the problem temporarily. Okay, what else have we got? I'll just take a couple more pairs. Piers is typing. Okay, here we go. Moving heads don't use the full 360 on Light Rider. Can this be changed? Um, they should be able to use the full 360 in Light Rider. It all depends on how you've set up the limitations. Um, so if you have any trouble with that, um, drop Piers a shout and he will check your fixture profile. Okay, anything else? I'll just have a last look through these uh, questions. Kevin Clark. Simon, could you add in plus and minus tabs on the sliders in a future update? I think, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're talking about being able to change these values here, just one value at a time. Um, and I agree, it's a great idea. 
Um, when I was playing about with uh, the laser bar, for example, I had to set a very specific value. And sometimes you've got to have very steady fingers to do that. So I think that's a great suggestion. Um, we'll definitely look into doing that in future. Uh, okay. And a question from Dan. Are you going to do a video session on how to use the profile app to make your own fixture profiles and get them into the Light Rider app. Yes, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, so next week, there are going to be three more sessions at least. Um, I think on Wednesday, I'm going to do audio. So synchronizing your lights with the music, like tapping the BPM or using a microphone or using Ableton Link. And then on Thursday, I'm going to do a seminar on the multibar. So anyone with like a gig bar or a KLS bar or anything like that, tune into that one. And then on Friday next week, I'm going to talk about the profile builder. So we've actually just launched a new profile editor. Um, it's an online one. Um, you can still access it from tablets and from an internet browser as well. Uh, you can create profiles. You can share them with other users. You can download them. Uh, you can back them up. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. So I'm going to dedicate an entire uh, video for that on Friday next week and it will be at the same time um, at about 4 p.m. UK time, 5 p.m. Central Europe. Um, why does the app not work on my Samsung S10e? Oh, Gavin, I'm really sorry. Um, unfortunately, we don't have every Android tablet that exists and we can't test on everything. We have about 10 different Android tablets from Samsung, from Huawei, from Google, from everything. And we rely on you guys emailing us and saying it doesn't work on this tablet so we can check it as soon as possible. So thanks very much for that, Gavin. Um, drop Piers a message, um, open a ticket on our website, um, then we've got it logged and we don't forget about it and we'll get our team straight on that. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Lee Miller. You are associated with a lighting manufacturer. Will you support them more than others? No, not at all. Um, we support all lighting manufacturers. Um, if you ever don't have a particular fixture, drop us an email and we'll do the best we can. Obviously, in some cases, it is difficult creating these profiles because sometimes like we're dealing with user manuals that are often incomplete, um, especially from uh, manufacturers going towards China. Uh, often they will say a channel does one thing when it actually does another thing. So uh, sometimes you've just got to bear with us a bit um, or try and tweak the profiles we make for you. Um, because sometimes we are a little bit blind when we're trying to just go off what's in the user manual. But we, we support all manufacturers. And um, yeah, just to remind you, we've got a completely free service where we can create the profiles for you. Um, okay, I'll just answer a couple more and then we'll wrap it up. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so um, demos for uplighters and downlighters. Um, yeah, what could we do for that? Um, I'll think of something. We'll do something next week. Let me write that one down. Uplighters and downlighters. I'm going to write that down. Up lighters and down lighters. Okay. Normally this involves, to be honest, setting a lot of manual levels and creating a lot of presets. It's often the easiest way to do it in Light Rider. Um, okay, another one. Not sure if this was covered. I have two ADJ focus spots. Um, how would I be able to mirror them properly? I've adjusted pan and tilt and set limits, but they don't mirror each other at all. Okay. Um, so... I would advise you, you trigger the center here and then you trigger the fan like this and they should mirror each other. So you see like these two uh, you know, color beams I've got in the middle. You see they're both pointing outwards at the moment and then when I do this they both point inwards. Get a little bit more haze in the room. So that should work. If they're not mirroring it could be a couple of reasons. One reason might be just that you don't have them in the correct order. So, for example, if I drag an inner color beam, let's say, over here, and then I drag another one over here, you see now they're not mirroring anymore because Light Rider thinks that this is the first light and this is the second light. 
So that might be the reason. If you make sure all the lights are mirrored in the list, they should be mirrored in reality. So I'll just put these back. I think this one went here. And this one went here. There we go. And now they're mirrored again. Um, worst thing, uh, if the worst comes to the worst, it might be that there's like a pan inverted setting on the light. So you can go into here and you can just invert it by swapping it over like this. So that's another way of uh, inverting the pan and the tilt. Okay, um, we're probably going to leave it there for today. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, thanks for bearing uh, bearing with me. Uh, what with it being the first uh, the first webinar. Um, thanks for all your questions. Keep them coming. Piers will answer every one of them for you. Thank you, Piers. And uh, yeah, I will catch up with you next week on Wednesday. Same place, same time. Keep inside, guys. It's really important. And uh, yeah, speak to you soon.